recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, members of the subcommittee. It's an honor to appear before you to discuss the subject. It is my sincere hope that there is room for bipartisan agreement, even in these times, when we talk about the government's role in regulating speech. We all are here today because we all have a deep love for this country. We come from different backgrounds, different parts, but we share that common article of faith. I'd like to speak to that today. These are difficult questions that I'm going to address, and these are divisive times, but they transcend politics. Notably, yesterday, in yesterday's hearing in the Oversight Committee, uh, James Baker said that he also thought there might be need for legislation. Uh, this is the former Twitter executive, former FBI uh, general counsel, and he said there might be need for legislation to limit the role of the FBI and other agencies in their relationship with social media companies. I think that that is true. But one of the reasons that this committee has a difficult task before it is that there is a crisis of faith, and it's not just simply with some of our constitutional values. Polls are showing that people have a distrust for the federal government, but also with the FBI. 20% in a recent poll said that the FBI was the greatest threat to the country. Only 40% of Americans said that they trust the FBI most of the time. 53% said they felt the FBI was acting politically. I'm not saying that those results are warranted. What I'm saying is it's a serious problem when the public, large portions of the public, have that level of distrust. My testimony that I've submitted to the record goes through the constitutional case law that applies to this issue of when the government goes too far. And I say that these are really very heavily contested questions. There are cases on both sides. And in some of the, my discussions, I say that actually I think the social media companies have a better argument. And in some parts, I think that there are legitimate issues here that might trigger the First Amendment. There are two different aspects to that analysis. One is that we do have direct action shown in the Twitter files by government employees. So we don't have to get into what I spend most of my time on, which is agency theory under the First Amendment. We know that there were dozens of federal employees who tabbed or targeted particular posts and posters for possible elimination and uh, suspension. Now, we can question whether that was a directive or a partnership or a coordination, but there was direct government conduct. So the question for this committee, first and foremost, is do you want your government in that business? And we can have, I hope, a civil and, and a respectful conversation about that. What's interesting about the Twitter files is that they establish what could be viewed as an agency. Now, as I go through a lot of the cases in the past, Courts have really struggled with this. At what point does a private party become an agent of the government? Cases like Page and others say that you can have that. Even if, by the way, the private agent turns down some requests, you can have that. And I go through the various tests uh, in, that, that apply. I also go through three things that are established. One, this may be the largest censorship system in the history of our country. Twitter alone reaches 450 million people. They're 15th on social media. Com companies like Facebook dwarf them in terms of their size. It is a censorship system. The ACLU has made clear that censorship can be both in government or private form, and it certainly can be in a government and private uh, uh, um, type of coordination. Second, uh, this is beyond what agencies usually do. This was not the FBI responding to criticism of the FBI. It was generally policing this thing called disinformation. And eventually they tagged things like jokes. They tagged just a ridiculous scope of information that they believed could be removed. And then third, I, what we have here on these, uh, in terms of, of what the government's doing is what we've seen before. Even if you assume that this does not create an agency relationship, it's wrong. It's wrong for the government to be in the business of silencing citizens. It's wrong. We saw it during the McCarthy period, where the government was behind the blacklisting of individuals. We said it was wrong 
It was wrong then, it's wrong now. We have to have that debate, and it has to move somewhere beyond our normal partisan divisions. Adlai Stevenson said that when there's a loss of faith in government, we lose everything. I hope that Senator Stevenson's words resonate with members of this committee. We have everything at stake when you have the government involved in censorship. And so I thank you again for allowing me to appear, and I look forward to working with members on both sides to look at this issue. Thank you.